All right. So you know I'm going to tell you guys about my offensive security certified professional certificate, how I got it, uh, the journey I took. So it all started a few uh, back in February to July 2019, somewhere in there. I really wanted to go for it, so my company ordered me the specific course. They got me a 90-day uh, lab access, and I first got the course materials. I looked at the videos, I watched them all, I built a solid foundation of what they were talking about, then I went to the course. They have some exercises in the course, of course. Um, they have first, so I did them along with the course. And when that was done, I went into the labs and I saw how far I could go. Now, in the labs, particularly, I had a few worries. So, the buffer overflow was, of course, one of my biggest worries because I didn't understand half of the terms they were using. But that is what offensive security was when I took it at least. When other people take it now, they have a new syllabus. But when I took it, the syllabus was really... The syllabus was good, but the content was meager. They were expecting you to go to Google and find a lot of this stuff yourself. So what I did was I got in the labs. I saw that there was also a buffer overflow machine, the same one. Uh, and I was like, oh this is not good, this is the same one that they did in the exercises, so it's not going to have a lot of uh, extra stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a few programs, a few applications that I can practice my buffer overflow on. So I went to the exploit database and I got a few buffer overflows that I understood what they were writing based on the course material, of course, and I went through that stuff. Uh, after that was done, I went through some more of the labs. Um, I didn't nearly complete all of it. I completed a big part of it, of course. Um, I had a lot of problems at that time because uh, my daughter was on the way. My daughter was um, actually in that time already born, I think. She was born the 3rd of May. So uh, we had a lot of worries on our head. Uh, um, but thankfully my wife, she was amazing. She took care of our daughter the whole time. Um, I took a lot of breaks during the exam, but I'll get to the exam part later. Um, and during the training, of course, you have to take at least three to four hours a day to um, get acquainted with the material. And I also took about, so this, this was my game plan from the start. I would take three hours a day after work to study the material. Then I would take one study day of eight hours a week. I would also study one day in the weekend for at least five hours. I would do this for my full 90 day duration. I had this opportunity because I would set an extra day of leave at my work and I could spend that day studying. Uh, when I was uh, doing my studying, um, there came a point where, uh, there you go, can I put this on real quick? So of course we had our daughter at that point um, I still had to study, I still had to study a lot, so uh, um, when she came we had to find a solution and my wife had to go to work of course still, so thankfully we still had my mom. Thank you mom, she took care of my daughter at that time uh, during the day while my wife was at work and I was studying. Um, so make sure when you go into the course that you are able to make some free time because you will need your time. Of course uh, it's not an easy thing. Uh, it's not super hard either, it's doable, but it's not very easy. You're gonna have to spend the time, and when you find yourself prepared to spend the time in the course, you're gonna find that you're able to succeed. And I know a lot of you people who are watching this, you already have the power to succeed, uh, because you're watching me ramble on about uh, a certification that probably half of the world doesn't even know exists. So thank you all for being here. Uh, so. I went into the labs, I got the secure shell pivoting um, to get into the other labs. I didn't complete it any further because my time ran out, my 90 days stopped. I was considering what to do next. I was thinking if I should extend my time in the labs or if I should just go and hack the box and do the old machines there. But at that time, uh, I made an OSCP post, I think, or I responded to one. Uh, I think it was about a study group. Uh, and I got into a Slack group that was all kinds of people doing hack the box together. Some people wanted to uh, do OCP as well. Uh, and we did hack the box together. And that's where I really got my privilege, privilege escalation skills. 
So in hacking, you have a few stages. You have your recon, you have your foothold, uh, and then you have your privilege escalation. And my recon and my foothold were pretty good. I mastered those techniques by the end of my labs, but privilege escalation was still a problem. I still struggle doing that, by the way, on a Windows machine. So if you guys struggle doing privilege escalation, don't worry. Everybody does. Everybody I know still does. Um, but these guys, they took me along and we motivated each other. And that was the beautiful part about this hacking group. After a while, we got to know each other. We started to laugh. We started to hack like never before. And we got through boxes like like crazy of boxes in one day two days like nothing we've ever done before and that's where i really gained the skills that i needed to pass the exam in my opinion um, so i went into i went to book my exam i was like okay i have a few months to book but if i don't set my exam date i'm not going to study hard enough at any time i need this deadline so i set my date for a few months later for a few weeks later excuse me and I just went to work. I went to work like never before. And I started going over my notes again. One of the one of the tips I really can give you guys is take notes. Take a really big note. Because what OSCP expects you to do, in my opinion. Hey, <laughs> nice to see you, Cybertuna. Yeah, we, we had some really late night sessions. So Cybertuna, single wall, late night, late night hacking nostalgia. We had some really late night sessions. That was so much fun. Especially for him, he's a few hours ahead of me, so when it was like 1 a.m. for me, he was like almost morning and he was like still hacking with me. So I really liked those times. <laughs> now I'm doing bug bounty hunts like that. Um, so uh, when, you, when I gained the skills and I was like, okay, now I'm ready, the exam day grew closer and closer and closer, and I got more and more and more nervous. And after a while, I got I really got nervous as the exam date was only just 24 hours away, so I made a few posts on, on Reddit as well. Uh, I want to read a few of these for you guys real quickly because I thought this was pretty cool to see again. Um, let me see here. Here they are. So the first one I made is tomorrow's D-Day. Well, here it is. been training six months for this day, and I'm scared out of my mind. I don't know if I'll pass or not. But I do know I learned more in the last six months than in the previous 28 years. I'm determined to continue until I pass. That does not take away the fact that I'm shaking like a leaf right now. That's really what I wrote because I was sitting in the car and crying like a baby. <laughs> I was so scared. The course has taught me I'll know frustration, I'll know anger, I'll know joy and I'll know confusion. But I have also learned I can hack anything if I just try harder. Keep trying harder, friends, nothing is impossible, see you on the other side. The Reddit community was incredibly supportive for me at that time and it really helped me out. I really did get support for that. So I made an update when I was done with the exam. Uh, submitted the lab report five minutes ago. This was my original post, blah blah blah. Rooted four out of five boxes, got all users. Now repay that my report is up to par. And the last post result, I passed. So, of course, I passed. The exam was horrible. I literally started. I started at 8 a.m. because I knew I had to bring away my wife. And then I had peaceful time until the evening. I could hack as much as I want, take breaks when I want. I had dedicated a full room. I prepared my food a day in advance. Nothing was ever going to bother me. I was sure of it. I had everything I needed. And I started my exam. So I had... As you know, like OSCP exam is divided into a few boxes. You start with uh, a 10 point box, you have some 20 point boxes, you have a 25 point buffer overflow, and you have a 25 point hard box. So I started, I needed some motivation. So I started using my 20 box Linux because Linux is pretty decent. I started doing my scans, my NMAP scans, Nikto, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in the background, there bus, there everything you need. Uh, and I went looking for what I could find and I saw that it had some open ports. So when those open ports were properly scanning, uh, I was going about my business and I started looking at a new target. <clears throat> That's how I pretty much did it. So I went at a target for about an hour, I looked for a foothold, I started my next scans, my next level of scans, and when I was done with those level of scans, I would go on to 
my uh, next target. So I would spend about one to two hours at each step and then I would take some rest some, uh, because I knew that after the foothold, after every step, I would get stuck. That's pretty much how I hack. I take a step, I get stuck, I get frustrated and I have to take a step back and then I can brute force my way forward. So I did that on the exam as well. Um, I took a break every two hours max, uh, went to get a coffee, have a smoking break um, and then went back into it. So after about maybe 10, 12 hours, um, ah, thank you, uh, Cybertuna has posted a link to the Slack, feel free to join, anybody's welcome, the more the merrier. So after about 10 to 12 hours, I was like, okay, now is the time, I, I am stuck on everything, I need some motivation, I'm going to do my buffer overflow. Everybody told me buffer overflow was easy, and it really was, guys. You just have to follow the steps they set out for you. You just have to look out for the bad characters. You just have to do what you have to do. And it's done. It took me maybe an hour, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, and I had to root it the full box. Uh, so I went on to my next target. The only thing I really struggled with, so I had rooted about everything except the 25 point box. I got to hour 20, I didn't sleep yet. I hacked through the whole night. And when it was morning, finally, I was like, okay, I have pretty much everything except root on my highest point box. So, fuck it, I'm just going to sleep. I'll write my report in the morning and we'll see what happens. So I closed down my session and I said goodbye to the proctor. The whole time somebody was watching me to the webcam, by the way. That was creepy as hell. One time I picked my nose <laughs> because I forgot somebody was watching me through the webcam and I was like, oh crap, somebody is watching me through the webcam. Oh crap. But it was okay. They didn't even mention it. They were highly professional. You didn't even know they were there. That's why I did it. <laughs> you really didn't even know it's your proctor was there. So when I got up in the morning, I started writing my report. And I noticed something. I noticed I had screenshots of all the flags. But I forgot to copy paste all of the flags. So I was writing my steps and then I went to the header, so insert your flag here. And I went, oh crap, I don't have this thing copy pasted. And I also have a bit of dyslexia, so it's hard for me to type over something that I'm seeing on the screen. Especially in a screenshot, and especially when it's terminal text, because it's black and white or whatever it is on your terminal. It's really hard to see, especially just those two colors. So um, what I did was I typed them over and over and I just called in my girlfriend and I was like can you please check these for me I really don't know if these are correct and she was like yeah this is correct this is correct I didn't show her anything else just like can you please read this over for me I'm not sure if this is correct I have dyslexia and she was like yeah no problem so I submitted my report it was Sunday evening I believe um, really nervous Monday I got a reply it was like okay thank you for your uh, thank you for your submission it took me another 10 hours to write your complete report by the way because I have complete dyslexia and it's really hard for me to get all the letters right and it was full of spelling mistakes and that kind of stuff thank god for spell check these days uh, when I was, so I sent in the report I got my mail back and it was like okay we will look into it and on Wednesday it was there you passed and I was like happier than anything I've ever been before so a few months later I got my report in my uh, in my mailbox um, on that day itself I went to the slack group that Cybertuna was talking about in the chat I had some amazing laughs with the guys I had some celebrations that's the fun part when I actually succeeded OSCP I was able to celebrate it with some of my peers these guys are amazing there's a link in the chat, go join if you want guys, it's really good, uh, it's a really good Slack group. Uh, I'm the administrator and so is Cybertuna and we also have uh, Beovolt and he's currently working on something in cybersecurity. Uh, so that's pretty much my uh, story about how I got my certificate. Uh, I'm going to